Hey everyone, Clifford is here. Today I wanted to share my thoughts on the Linux Code of Conduct controversy that has been going on over the past week or so. If you're already a full-time Linux user who stays up to date with the community, then you probably know what's going on. If you're a new user just checking out Linux for the first time because of the Steam Proton stuff, then you may be a little bit in the dark. So. I'm going to give a brief overview of what has happened recently and why some people think that the end times of Linux are upon us mere weeks after the most exciting Linux gaming news of all time. I'll then offer my own thoughts and opinions on the matter and invite you to share yours too. I'll try to keep this easy to digest, easy to understand and I'll try to be fair to all sides of the matter despite my own opinions which I will get into. So what has happened? Well, the Linux Foundation, that is the organization that is responsible for developing, releasing and maintaining the Linux kernel, recently adopted a new code of conduct for contributors to the Linux kernel project. This document is based on another document called the Contributor Covenant. The Contributor Covenant is essentially a boilerplate code of conduct that is aimed at free and open source projects. Its creator, Caroline Ada M.K., I probably mispronounced that, she claims that over 40,000 projects have adopted the Contributor Covenant since its creation. I won't read the whole document out in this video, but I've left a link to it in the description. At around about the same time that the Linux Foundation adopted their new code of conduct, Linus Torvalds, the original creator of the Linux kernel and head of the Linux kernel project, announced that he was taking a temporary leave, saying that he was troubled by his own past behaviour and needed some time to, and I quote, get some assistance on how to understand people's emotions and respond appropriately. Many people in the Linux community have connected these two events, theorising that Linus has been ousted from his own organisation by social justice warriors. To add further fuel to the fire, Sage Sharp, a member of the Linux Foundation Technical Advisory Board and advocate for the new Code of Conduct, has attacked fellow board member Theo So on Twitter, calling him a rape apologist after he voted against the new Code of Conduct. And that is about as much as can be said about the situation without getting into conspiracy theories and political discussions. So now it's time for some conspiracy theories and political discussions. Here we fucking go, lads. What are my thoughts? Firstly, I do believe that the Contributor Covenant Code of Conduct is a highly political document. I feel like there are some good parts to it, but that those parts are just kind of outlining basic human decency and it's pretty fucking creepy that these things are being enforced in a Code of Conduct like this. I also think there is a lot of unnecessary language that serves only to empower those of a particular ideology and thus completely undermines anything positive there is to say about the document. And yes, when I say those of a particular ideology, I am talking about social justice warriors. Now, to be clear, I am not a conservative. I am a libertarian leftist. Arguably, I align with SJWs on social issues. However, SJWs are authoritarians. They seek to dismantle freedom of speech and police the thoughts of others. They would rather force you to act a certain way than try to convince you that it is the best way to act and trust you to make an informed decision. To that end, I could not be more opposed to SJW ideology. I am more than happy to have a discussion, work together with, or even be close friends with someone who I disagree with politically. I believe there is always something to be learned by understanding why someone believes what they do. I don't hate anyone because of their ideology. But I hate SJWs. I hate SJWs because they are liars, cheats, bullies, hypocrites, and they ruin everything they come into contact with. And they often do these things while falsely claiming to be champions of some cause that I happen to actually believe in. Take Gamergate, for example. They claim to be fighting for gender equality, something that I very much believe in, but their actions proved that they were more interested in bullying people that they disagreed with. 
something that I find abhorrent and disgusting. It is this deception and hypocrisy, combined with their authoritarian values, which makes them so powerful. If you're on the left, it is easy to think the SJWs are on your side, but they aren't. Sooner or later, you're going to disagree with them, and it's not going to result in a healthy and enlightening discussion for both parties. It's going to result in you succumbing to their wrath. And there are certainly those in the Linux community who think that this is what has happened to Linus. I certainly believe that this is what happened to Theo So because Sage Sharp has outright fucking tweeted the evidence. It is absolutely absurd to suggest that So is a rape apologist. But according to SJW rules, questioning the accusation is the same as saying that you too are a rape apologist. And with the adoption of the new code of conduct, the Linux Foundation is, regrettably, under SJW rules now. So, Linux is now reigned by a bunch of purple-haired Trump haters with exotic pronouns. So what, right? It's not like the kernel itself can have a political opinion, is it? It's not as if the code in the kernel is about to decline in quality, is it? This is a question I've been asking myself a lot over the last week. As much as I hate SJWs, I also believe that SJWs can write good code, if they know how. It doesn't matter what your political opinion is, or what colour your skin is, or if you're Muslim, or gay, or whatever. Good code is good code, and it can be written by anyone. This is, and always has been, the strength of the open source community. So why is it suddenly necessary for quote-unquote diversity to be enforced in a code of conduct? Of course, that's not the main reason for the new code of conduct being implemented, or so they would have you believe. They will tell you that the new code of conduct is necessary because of the way Linus Torvalds has treated kernel contributors over the years. They will tell you that this is all about stopping bullying and fostering a healthy environment among contributors. And if this is what it was really about, then I'd be all for it. But just like every other SJW movement, what they say it is all about is never what it is actually about. Indeed, there is even reason to question the authenticity of the email Linus sent out in which he criticised his own behaviour and announced his leave, some believing that it was written under duress or was copy-pasted from another source due to the use of quotation characters that Linus has never used in his emails before. He's even criticised people for using these very characters in the past. But that's kinda entering a tinfoil hat territory. As much as I think there is something to the quotation character argument, I also think that Linus has displayed some rather inappropriate behaviour in the past, and I applaud him for seeking help in this matter, assuming that it is of his own volition and not under duress of the SJWs. At the same time, however, I believe that the Linux kernel is such a solid piece of software today, directly due to the fact that Linus has been brutal in his criticism of the code that has been contributed to the kernel. His standards are incredibly high, and that is why the Linux kernel is so robust. Something that isn't entering into tinfoil hat territory, however, is looking at other open source projects that have adopted the contributor's covenant and assessing the damage. One popular example is FreeBSD. They adopted a code of conduct based on the Contributor Covenant back in 2015, and since then have become a laughing stock amongst the tech community due to the declining quality of the code and their incredibly slow implementation of security patches. This is no doubt due to the fact that the project is understaffed. It is not a stretch to suggest that this is directly related to the unreasonably strict guidelines set in place by the Code of Conduct. I don't think it's unreasonable to suggest that the same thing will happen to the Linux kernel. It is now much easier for the SJWs in the Linux Foundation to conduct a witch hunt and oust every contributor who gets in the way of their political goals. With every trace of Linus and his high standards gone from the Foundation, sloppy code could make it into the kernel. It is also possible that organisations like Intel and Microsoft will now have greater influence over the Linux kernel, as they don't have to get their contributions past the scrutiny of Linus. Just do a little song and dance about how you love social justice and get your thinly veiled backdoors put directly into the kernel. 
that's the gist of the argument that says Linux is effectively dead. I don't think we'll know for sure until, at the very earliest, kernel 4.19 is officially released. Considering that kernel 4.19 was mostly developed before the code of conduct was implemented, it may not be until the kernel after that when we start to see the effects, if there are going to be any. So, what does the future of Linux look like? There are many possibilities. The first thing to consider is that Linus's leave is supposed to be temporary. Indeed, it's not the first time that he has taken a break from kernel development. However, if he is to be the subject of a witch hunt during this leave, then he may never come back. So what happens if Linus doesn't return? Well, maybe everything will be fine. Maybe the quality of the code will not change. Maybe the goals of the Linux Foundation will not change, and despite the obvious political goals of those behind the code of conduct, their true intentions are nothing more than to improve Linux, and they may succeed. And as much as I don't want to support any organisation that will support SJW politics, Linux is free. They're not getting a penny off of me, and I still get to use quality software. This, in my opinion, is an unlikely scenario. So, what if the quality does decline? What if the kernel becomes horribly slow, or unstable, or full of back doors? Well, it's free and open source. Anyone can fork the kernel and begin development under a non-SJW code of conduct. However, if this does happen, then I think a lot of momentum will be lost. The Linux kernel has improved rapidly over the last few years, in no small part thanks to contributions from large tech organisations like Intel, AMD, and even Microsoft. These organisations are unlikely to jump ship to a new non-SJW Linux foundation from fear of a PR backlash. And even with good coders and good intentions, this new Linux Foundation may not have the resources necessary to keep the forked kernel secure. That is, unless there is a huge exodus from the existing Linux Foundation. If everyone important leaves to join a new foundation and work on a forked kernel, maybe even with Linus at the helm once more, then it would not take long for the SJW Linux kernel to collapse, especially if the key contributors pull their code from it, as they are able to do so under the GPL license. As much as larger corporate contributions may stick with the SJWs for some time for fear of a PR disaster, they would still likely abandon them as soon as it becomes bad for business, which wouldn't take long if the kernel degrades in quality and starts being shunned by the tech industry. It's kind of hard to imagine any of these scenarios playing out, and it'll be hard to watch no matter what happens, but I do think this is the extent of the possibilities. So what can you do? As much as there is a huge community in adamant opposition of the new code of conduct, this whole situation is ultimately out of our hands. Whatever will happen now will happen, and if things go bad, then what can we do to protect ourselves from the effects? Personally, I have blacklisted the Linux kernel in my Pac-Man configuration. I will not update to kernel 4.19 until I've seen how it performs in the wild. I will wait for someone to find some evidence of declining quality in the code. I will essentially treat kernel releases like new game releases. Wait for reviews. Wait for benchmarks. If the kernel quality does decline, then I will remain on kernel 4.18 indefinitely. I will wait for a maintained fork of the kernel, or for Linus to return to the Linux Foundation, or for the code of conduct to be repealed. But these things may not happen. Linux may not die and then be reborn like a phoenix, but instead become a zombie, another untrustworthy piece of software like Windows 10. I may then switch to a fork of BSD or something else entirely, or just run kernel 4.18 for the rest of time, my Linux gaming computer effectively becoming the future equivalent of a dusty old XP machine. Because why do I use Linux anyway? For one, it appeals to my libertarian values. It gives me the freedom and liberty to use my computer the way I want it. I can customise every facet of my operating system to my liking. I can modify the source code of a program to make it slightly more comfortable for me to use. I can more or less do anything that I want, except run Windows games. Except, I can do that too, thanks to Wine, DXVK and Steam Proton. 
This is all enabled by the stability, modularity, openness and robustness of the Linux kernel. If that declines, then so does my freedom, and so does the joy I get from using my computer. And it is my computer. I get to decide what I do with my computer. Not Microsoft or Apple, not Intel or AMD, not the government, not anyone but me. And I'm certainly not about to let SJWs tell me how to use my computer.